And I keep on souls to Jesus by the service. Well, I've got to walk right and talk right and sing right, pray right while on the Well, I've got to walk right and and sing right and pray right while on the well, I've got to walk right and talk right and sing right and pray right while on the And I keep on to Jesus by the service that I give. And all of God's children said amen. Glad to be a member of the body of Christ, the church of Christ, say amen. amen. Glad to know all spiritual blessings are indeed in Christ Jesus, say amen. amen. If it's just good to be here this morning on this beautiful Lord's Day, somebody ought to say amen. amen. As always, we're thankful to the God of heaven for, again, another opportunity to come together under the canopy of heaven. Yes. Coming together this morning that we might sing praises unto his holy name, that we might tell him thank you for just a little while longer on this time side of life. Too often we take for granted that we're going to wake up, but I stop by to tell you it's not promised unto us. It is by the grace of God and by the mercies of him that allow us to wake up each morning and to start on our way, and we ought to eternally be thankful to the God of heaven as he continues to look down upon us and shower us with his love. I, 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 I won't ever stop saying it. God is good. I say God is good. Amen. And he is good all, all the time. Even when we don't think things are well, God is still good. Even in our trials and our tribulation, God is He's still good, y'all. Amen. Even in our ups and downs, we, we, we need to recognize that God is still good. He is still good. He's still good. I want to thank those who have stood before us this morning in our devotional service. You, you have indeed done a wonderful job. Amen. I want to thank our teachers for, again, their, their diligence in preparing and as well presenting their lessons on, on this morning. I quickly want to say I want to thank Brother Morton who stood in for me on Wednesday night and appreciate his, uh, his continual effort and his work uh, for the Lord, for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And for all of you, good to see those that were not with us on last Lord's Day. God has again granted you a space and time. Uh, those that were out traveling, those that were sick, those that were seeing after the sick. Uh, it's certainly good to have you back in the house, in the house of the Lord. Y'all all right this morning? I say, are y'all all right this morning? Amen, amen. Let's, uh, uh, let's do some stuff this morning. I say, let's do some stuff this morning. There is a word. I just get a kick out of saying that. There's a word. It's got to be a word, brother lad. I just don't feel like preaching right now. Can I take my time, Sister Kathy? Can I just, can I just uh, embell in this thing? Can, can we sing another song? Hello, somebody. Brother Morton, you got one for us. Give us one this morning. Oh, let's do it. Uh, yeah. You want this one? You got that. Try your talk on every hand. We cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed 
promised land. But he got us with his and we'll follow to we die. We understand it better by and by. I'm singing by and by. Oh, when the morning comes, I'm telling you, all the saints of And we will tell the story how we overcome. And we will understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of the thing that life demands. And a fool who thirsty hills and barren land, but we're trusting in the Lord and according to His word, we will understand it better by and I'm singing by and by. Oh, when I'm telling you all oh, the saints of God's gathering, we will tell the story how we over. We will understand it better by and by. The temptation hid and snare take us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed. And we'll wonder why the tale when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. Singing by and by, oh, when the morning. I'm telling you, all the saints of God's gathering, and we will tell the story how we overcome, and we will understand it better by and by. By and by, uh, by, by and by, by, when the morning comes, when the morning comes, when the morning comes, uh, all the saints of God, uh, all, all the saints of God, will we'll be gathering home, will we'll be gathering home. We will tell the story. We will tell the story. We'll tell the story how we overcome. How we overcome. How we overcome. Oh, understand it better. Understand it better. Understand it better by and by. Again, there is a word from the Lord in reference to the pattern of the last few Lord's Day. As we had uh, endeavored to highlight, spotlight, and shed some light on Christ and his church. Make no mistake about it. You can't have one without the other. Welcome to the church of Christ. 
if indeed you need to more need to know more about the church. Uh, ironically, Sister Jean has put something in your bulletins. When uh, what we need to know about the church. The first opportunity you get, not while I'm preaching this morning, but the first opportunity you get, you ought to read that. If you want to know more about the church of Christ. Christ died for the church. Christ built the church. Christ shed his precious blood for the church. As we stand this morning in obedience to the truth. Let me, let me tell you something about the truth. Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse number 32, the truth shall set you free. Am I right about it? According to John chapter 15 or in verse number 15, John 14 and John 16, he talks about the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Is that all right? Uh, uh, according to the Bible, uh, God's truth will endure to the end. It's something about the truth. Jesus said on one occasion, I am the truth and the life. No man come unto the Father uh, but by me. My prayer for the church at Green Meadow is that we become more foundationless sound. Not only foundationless sound, but fundamentally sound. My prayer for Green Meadow as we become more doctrinally sound. Not only that, but my prayer is we become more spiritually sound. When, when, when I think about the soundness of the church, I think in terms of how the church comes together. I say when I think about the soundness of the church, y'all do know the church is sound. I, I, I think in terms of how this great institution comes together. Before I lose somebody or lose myself this morning, I want to stop and just give you a subject in the assembly. I said in the assembly. I was talking to one of the members this past week and, 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 and they said, Brother Thompson, what's the message for Sunday? I said, in the assembly. Y'all just stay with me now. Uh, I, 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 I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. Let me uh, assure you this morning the importance and the significance of the assembly. Let me assure you of the importance and the significance of the assembly. Let me also advise you of the commandment of the assembly. In the text, Hebrews chapter 10. Here the Hebrew writer pins these words. And you got to know in this setting, he, he appeals to those Christians to hold fast. You, 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 you got to know they were going through some persecution. And he says in verse number 21, and having a high priest over the house of God. You need to know that Jesus Christ is our high priest. It's not Mel Chesedek, but it is Jesus Christ. Let us draw near with a true heart. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, not wavering. For he is faithful that promise. That's good news, isn't it? I said, for he is faithful that promise. And let us 
consider one another that we might provoke unto love and to good works. I like that. He said, let us first of all consider one another that we might provoke one another unto love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, uh, there remained no sacrifice for our sins. In the assembly. The word assembly uh, by definition means a group of persons gathered together for a common reason. Could be a legislation, could be educational, it could be social, or it could and or be religious. This lesson this morning might be simple, but I guarantee you it's powerful. I said this lesson might be simple, but I guarantee you it's powerful. You see, when I look at this word, assemble, the Greek word used here in the text today is sonungo. And, 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 and sonungo I, I, I just refers to us as a gathering together. So this morning we are in the sonungo. We are gathered together. We have assembled ourselves for the purpose of serving God this morning. Hello somebody. Not only that, but there's another word for the assembly and it is called uh, the ecclesia. You already know what the ecclesia is. It is the called out. It, it, it is the called out unto a gathering. And, 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 and let me say this real quickly. We all have been called out. All of us who have put on Christ in baptism, who claim to be disciples of Jesus, we are called out from the world into his glorious body. Am I right? We, we have been transformed from the darkness into his marvelous light. I got to speed up for somebody to go to sleep this morning. I, I, I'm just trying to tell you there is an assembly that we all must meet. Paul, Paul, Paul parallels the assembly uh, 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 of the church as a, 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 as a well a, a well or machine. According to Ephesians chapter 4 and and, and I believe it is verse number 16. Uh, 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 Paul says, from, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, compacted by which every joint supplied and could the affection working in the measure of every part, making the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. When you think of the assembly, when you Think of God's children coming together for the sole purpose of worshiping and giving him honor, glory, and thanksgiving. I, I, I look at a well. You, you, you see, when we get together, church, when the church is on its own, when the church is doing what God has called for it to do, we have become that perfect entity that God would have. When we are perfectly joined together, fitted, compacted, joined in every part, everybody for the measure of... Oh, Y'all ain't hearing me. I, I'm just talking about how the church, when we come into the assembly, when we ought to be what God had called us to be. Hello, y'all. We in the assembly now. I say we in the assembly. Let me, let, me, let me say that. He said that we are fitly joined together. God knew what he was doing, didn't he? That's why he put those men in places where he needed them in the body. 
Some were evangelists, some were teachers, some were pastors. Am I right? Some was all for the edification, for the perfect of the saints till we come into the unity. Lord have mercy. Amen. This is getting good to me. A amen. And I need you to understand that we are in the assembly. When the assembly is as God would have it, it is like a well or machine. Working in the measure of every part, making the increase of the body that we edify one another in love. Hello, y'all. Let me say this about the assembly. Charles, get for me uh, uh, Psalms 111. Billy, get for me Psalms 122. Mike, get Psalms for me 89. And and, and, and we're going to hurry up and get this thing. I, 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 I need just to understand that, 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 that we ought not to take the assembly lightly. I ought to get some amens. I said we ought not to take the assembly of God's children together lightly. Hello, y'all. According to Psalms number 111 and verse number 1, what did the Bible say? Praise ye the Lord, and I will praise the Lord with how, how we ought to praise him. He said that we ought to praise the Lord with our whole heart. That means when we come into the assembly, Chris, we ought not to come in here haphazardly. We ought not to come in here just any old kind of way. But he said, I'm going to praise him wholeheartedly. Come on, Doc. In where? Y'all ain't hearing me. He said, when I come in the assembly, I'm going to praise him with my whole heart. That mean I'm going to sing. That mean, ooh, what else did he say? In the assembly of the upright. And in the congregation, Lord have mercy. He said, when I come into the assembly, I come in to give him some praise, y'all. Don't let nobody step on your praise this morning. I come to give him some praise because I'm in the assembly and I'm going to serve him, praise him with my whole heart. Amen, amen. Because I understand, I understand a little bit later in that psalm, he said, holy and reverend. You see, if folk can praise another reverend, a man-made reverend, surely we can praise God in reverence. Hello, y'all. I'm just talking about we ought not to take the assembly lightly. Amen. We ought to be exhorting one another as we see the day approaching. Brother Thompson, you got Psalms number one, one, 122, something like that. Ooh. That's David, y'all. David said, I was what? I was glad when they said what? Unto me, let us do what? Let us go into the house of the Lord. I wish I had time to deal with all that David said. But David was glad to come into the assembly of God. David said we stood at the door. David said we went in. David said there was praise in the house. David said there was peace in the house. David said that was, there was love in the house. When we came into the assembly... It's something about the assembly. I stopped by to tell you, don't take the assembly lightly. Hello, somebody. According to Psalms 89 and verse number 7, what did the Bible say? God is greatly, to be God is greatly what? To be feared. To be feared in the, in the woo -hoo. Let me let me let me let me give y'all let me give y'all a note, y'all that walk around all through the worship service. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly. Hello, y'all. Can I pause for a minute? You, you, you see too much going on in the assembly. Now, I know if you're sick, and I know you got to move, but we got folk just walking around in the assembly just to be walking around. But he said God ought to be greatly feared in the assembly. Am I right? You ought to use the bathroom for the... I ain't going to mess with nobody this morning. He ought to be greatly feared in the assembly. What else did he say? In the assembly of the saints. 
in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence of all them that are about him. I'm talking about in the assembly. He ought to be held in reverence. We ought to come in here with a piety. We ought to come in here, amen, like we ain't nothing because in God's sight, he loves us, but when it comes down to him, we ain't nothing. Somebody said we just feel the rags in the sight of God. Am I right? But God loves us, didn't he? He loves us enough to send Jesus to die for us. And when we come into the assembly of God, we ought to come with a presence of God that we ought to act like we got. I said we ought to act like we got some sense when we come into the house of the Lord. I'm just talking about in, 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 in the assembly. Uh, don't take the assembly lightly, somebody. There, 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 there are some... There are some great assemblies when I look down through biblical history. Let me, let me show you real quickly of some great assemblies. I, I, I'm reminded of a great assembly at Mount Sinai. And you remember when Moses had went up in the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. He got the tablets. And when he came, hello, y'all. When he came back down out of the mountain, there was a great assembly gathered when he began to go through those Ten Commandments. This is on the second trip. Not only that, but there was a great assembly. You remember in Joshua chapter 23 and Joshua chapter 24 when Joshua called all the elders together as he gave his farewells. Y'all remember that? That's when Joshua said it's for me and my house. God said, who, who, who you going to serve? Choose you whom you going to serve. Whether you going to serve them folks on the other side, the Amorites, or your fathers. And he said, but for me and my house. That was a great assembly. Joshua farewell speech. Not only that, but there's another great assembly in the history. When David, when David coronation, when, when God, a, a man chose David to be the second king of Israel in his appointment and his anointment, there was a great crowd. There was a great assembly. Then there, there was a great assembly in Jerusalem in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 for, for the dedication of the temple. There, there was a great assembly. Not only that, but in, in Josiah's Reformation, there was a great assembly. Not only that, but you remember, you remember in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, when Ezra, when Ezra stood in the pulpit and Ezra gave the law of God, the Bible said that there was a great assembly. Something about the assembly. Don't, don't take the assembly of God Lightly, even, even in Jesus' trial in Matthew 27, there was an assembly that stood and heard all the words that were said in the trial of Jesus. You got to know, you got to know in Acts chapter 2, we've been talking about it for the last few weeks, there was a great assembly on the day of Pentecost. Am I right about it? Devout men came from all over. Amen. When they heard Peter and the apostles stand and Peter preached that first sermon on the day of Pentecost, when you look out, there had to be a great assembly. You know how I know there was a great assembly? Because there were 3,000 that obeyed the gospel on that very day. So, Brother Larry, I smart enough to know that everybody didn't obey. And so there had to be a great assembly. Amen. Then I'm reminded of the assembly in Jerusalem, uh, Acts chapter 15, when, when there was a question about some doctrinal issues. The Bible said the elders and the apostles went back to Jerusalem to straighten some. Amen. That's what we need to do in the church. We need to go back to the and straighten some stuff out. There's some stuff that got loose in the church. Some point we need to go back to Jerusalem, sit down with the council. You know what the council is? The council is the word of God. We need to sit down with the book and straighten some stuff out in, in the assembly. You, 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 you remember when, when they were preaching, the Bible said, and it came to pass that a whole year had went by. That The Bible said they had assembled themselves. They were down in Antioch. Am I right about it? And not only did they assemble themselves, but the Bible said they taught much people and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. What had they done? They had assembled. 
themselves. There's something about the assembly. You want to know how important the assembly is? You watch Jesus. You watch Jesus in the book of Matthew, in the book of Mark, in the book of Luke. Those three gospels, when Jesus came into any territory, the first thing he did was go to the assembly. Am I right about it? Follow Jesus. The Bible said he went in the temple. The Bible said he went into the synagogue. Wherever he was, whenever he went into Capernaum, when he went into Judea, when he went into Galilee, the first thing he did was go to the assembly. Amen. That's where he caught all this flag. Every time he would go into assembly to teach, somebody jumped on him. The lawyer jumped on him. The Pharisee jumped on him. Certain man jumped on him. Everybody wanted to jump on Jesus. But I stopped by to tell you his first move was to go into the assembly. Be it the synagogue, be it the temple, be it wherever they were worshiping. When Jesus came into the coast, he even taught from the boat. He taught a great assembly. It's something about it. The assembly. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. You know what? You know what we land on today? We land on when the Bible said Jesus said, Where where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am. Ain't, ain't that scripture, ain't it? There I am in the midst. Uh, that's a good text. That lets me know that he's here right now. That lets me know that if I'm far away, he's still with me. But let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, don't let nobody make no mistake about it. Don't get it twisted. That don't mean that I can stay at home. Oh, y'all in here. Man. I said, that don't mean I can just stay at home every Lord's day and say, well, it's two or three of us. We're gathered here in Jesus. Don't, don't, don't get that scripture twisted. That don't give me an excuse not to come into the assembly. Hello, somebody. I say, hello, somebody. It's a comfort when you're out of town and there's not a church available to you and you and your family can worship God together. That's a good scripture, but that's not the scripture to stay at home on on Sunday morning and claim you've been to worship. That's not a scripture to look at TV, amen, watch Joel Osteen preach about how you're going to get some money and then you talking about you've been to church. That don't get it. I don't get it when Cleflo Dollar talking about give me enough money to go buy me a $68 million jet. That ain't worshiping God. And let me tell you something real quickly. Cleflo Dollar and them finna make it hard for every preacher around. If we can't even get paid a salary for preaching unless the IRS gonna be looking. Hello, y'all. Because they are making millions of dollars with this prosperity gospel and they do it. Hello, y'all. Anytime, anytime a woman got to drive six miles or catch a bus six miles and have four bus passes to come to my church to give me some money. Hell, y'all ain't hearing me. And I can't do nothing. Whew. Something ain't right about that, y'all. I got a woman that drive all across town to come to my service. And all I'm thinking about, how I'm going to get my next jet. That ain't my session. It ain't my lesson, but I, 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 I just need to, you know, there's something about the assembly. Amen. I said there's something about the assembly. You see, ooh, time is gone. You see in the assembly, you see in the assembly, everybody is somebody. Hello, y'all. You, you, you see, when you came in the door, you were just more important than anybody else who came before you or came after you. Every, every soul in the assembly is worth something to God. Hello, y'all. I don't care where you live. I don't care what you got. My soul ain't no more precious than your soul. When you come into the assembly of God, we all on the same level ground. We all let the foot of the cross. Ain't no big eyes and ain't no little use. I'm talking about at the foot of the cross. Now in men's mind it might be, but at the foot of the cross ain't no big eyes and ain't no little use. We all 
are important in the sight of God. Am I right? When you in the assembly, God just asks you to come and give your all. Am I right? Give your best in the assembly. Whatever you're doing, whether you're singing, whether you're praying, whether you're preaching, whether you're giving, whether you're partaking of the Lord's Supper, all he asks in the assembly is your best. Give him your best. We all on the same ground. Am I right about it? Can I, can I give you an example? Anybody, anybody got a 20? I'm going to give it back. I would ask for 100, but they get scared when you ask for 100. I, I just need a 20. I just need to show you a quick illustration. Amen. Amen. Oh, I got one. This is a 20. Am I right? The value of a 20 ain't much now, but it's still a 20. Amen. If I fold this 20 into, I guess it's four. Uh -huh. Is the value of this 20 still the same? Yeah. If I give Russell back his 20, he ain't going to argue at me. Because it's still or what? It has not lost its value. Am I right? Now let me, let me fold it again. I'm going to fold it a little bit. All right. yeah. That ain't worth nothing, is it? It's still a 20, brother scale. It had not lost its value. Hello, somebody. If I throw it on the floor. Hello, somebody. It's still a 20. Its value Hello, somebody. If, if, if I step on it and match it under my foot, it's still a 20. It has not lost its value. If you are a child of God and you're doing the best you can, you may not be as good as somebody else, but you still got your value. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Russ. I'm broke. <laughs> it did not lose its value. Neither when you walk in and serve God will you lose your value. Amen. You see, the assembly is, is where we ought to know how to act, too. First Timothy chapter 3, I think it is, verse number 15, Paul said, but if I tarry long, that you might ought to know how to behave yourself in the house of, of God, which is the true and the living God. I, 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 I said in the assembly, we ought to know how to act in the assembly. There ought not to be a lot of foolishness cutting up, acting crazy, Cussing, pulling guns. Hello, y'all. Y'all looking at me funny. Paul said that we ought to know how to behave. Paul said, I'm, if I tear along, meaning that if I don't get there when I, I supposed to get there, I, I need you to know, Timothy, to teach them how they ought to behave themselves in the house of God, which is the pillar and the ground of the truth. Am I right? Am I right? In the assembly, we ought to come in here like we got some sense. When we come into assembly, we ought to have a little pride about ourselves. We ought to be thankful that God has chosen us to be the children of his in his family. There ought to be something about us that separates us from everybody else. When we come into the assembly, there ought to be something that glows about us that let folk know that we're glad to be members of the body of Christ. I'm just talking about in, in, in the assembly. In, in the assembly. Let me tell you something else about the assembly. James told us about the assembly in James chapter 2 and verse number 2, I think it is, when, when there was a man who came in, in in gold apparel. Ain't that what the Bible said? And he had on a, 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 on a big diamond ring. And, and the boy looked pretty good, didn't he? And, 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 and you know what they did? They ushered him to the front. Hey Amen. You better be careful. I told you in the assembly, everybody is the same. 
every soul that comes to the door is valuable to God. Your soul ain't no valuable than mine, and mine no valuable than yours. Amen. It don't matter how many rings I got on. I'm still, hello, y'all. I'm still doing what you're doing, trying to make heaven my home. Hello. James said, be careful. Be careful how you, tre how you treat him. Am I right? Be careful how you treat him because you, 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 you can't sit him up here. And then when I come in and all I was afford to wear was a pair of blue jeans. But you stop. Hello, y'all. You stop me at the back door. Don't do that. Because my soul is just important as his soul. I'm talking about in the assembly, in the eyes and the sight of God. We all, all the same. I'm just talking about in the assembly how how we ought to how we ought to act, a Amen. How we ought to carry ourselves in, in 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 the assembly. In the assembly, you see, you see, we come in the assembly to learn. Hello, y'all. We come to learn more about Jesus. We come to be like the Bereans, those that search the scriptures daily of those things that were so. We come to be like the Bereans in the house of one of us, in the house of, 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 of one of us near, those that went out to do the ministry of Jesus every day. We ought to come into the assembly. Hello, y'all. Amen. We ought to come into the assembly to seek to grow. Why Peter said we ought to grow. Am I right about it? Yeah. Design the sincere milk of the way. We ought to come into assembly church to be healed. Yeah. You, you see, sometimes when we come into the assembly, we broke down. We, we, am, am I right? We tore up from the flow up. Sometimes when we come into the assembly, we drag in one leg. Yeah. But we ought to come into the assembly to be healed. And we ought to be doctors for one another. We ought to be in the healing for one another. We come into the assembly to laugh. Hello, somebody. We come into the assembly to cry. We come into the assembly to share. We come into the assembly to love. And we come into the assembly to work out our own soul salvation in in the assembly. Amen. Don't take the assembly lightly. And that's why the Hebrew letter, uh, writer says, let us consider one another. You see, when, when you look around and your neighbor not here, you ought to consider him. Amen. Amen. You, a, amen. Somebody ought to consider one that's not here in the service of the Lord because you got to know when you're not here, you're missed. Amen. 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 It's not only the preacher or the elders that's missed, but everybody in the assembly ought to be missed when they're not here. Everybody in the assembly ought to get a telephone call. Everybody in the assembly ought to be, hello, y'all. When they're not, when they're not here, the assembly, amen, is when we ought to lift up our voices. Amen. We got some good shower singers, don't we? I said, we got some good shower singers in the church. Boy, don't we sing loud in the shower? I guess I can just speak for myself. I sing loud in the shower. But sometime in the body, I cap it off. I stop by to tell you in the assembly you ought to sing louder here than you do in the shower. If you sing in glory in the shower, you ought to sing glory in the congregation. David was looking forward to being here. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. David was ready to go into the, am I right? Some folk are just anxious to be in the church. I like Brother Story. Brother Story will tell me on Saturday night, if it be the Lord's will, I'll see you in the a.m. <laughs> He's anticipating yes, sir. Yes, sir. being ready to go into the house of the Lord. You know what that does for me? That gear me up. All right. All right. Amen. When I talked to him last night, Brother Larry, I was moving a little slow. But when he told me I, 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 he was getting geared up, you, you know what I told him? I, I said, I'll see you later. I start getting my stuff together. <laughs> Hello, somebody. His excitement rolled over to me. 
And, and then I start getting excited. I went and pulled my lesson out one more time, make sure that I had it just like I I start changing some. I said, boy. In, in the assembly. Ain't nothing like it, y'all. Ain't nothing like coming into the assembly of God, being able to see those that you love. You see, you see, you see, I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I catch a lot of H-E double hockey sticks through the week. I got seven guys that work with me. Ain't none of them members of the church. So you know, and, and let me tell you, they respect me long as I'm there. As soon as I leave, I can hear them cussing before I even get in the truck. <laughs> Hello, somebody. That's just what I deal with. And, and it ain't just me. You work on folk on your job that's not members of the body, have no... Re- and so when I come into the service on, 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 on Sunday morning, you know, I, I, I just want to come and be edified. I want to come and encourage somebody. I want to come and just enjoy myself. Hello, y'all. We're talking about heaven this morning. That's, we ought to be happy because we are preparing ourselves to go to heaven. We got to do it through the assembly of God in the house of God, in the church of Christ. In the assembly. You see anybody today that wasn't here, you, you, you tell them we missed them in the assembly. Is that all right? The assembly of the saints in the congregation of the saints. They, we missed them in the assembly because in the assembly, brother story, there, there's an appreciation for collaboration. There's a balm for your burdens. There's a cure for your cause. There's a devotion for your depression. There's a fruit for the fruitful, there's a good for the godly, there's a healing for the hurting, there's a inspiration for the ignored, there's a joy for the German. I'm talking about in, in, in the assembly. There's a key for knowledge, there's a love for the lonely, there's a message for the mission, there's a name for the nameless, there's an opportunity for the oppressed, there's a peace for your problem. I'm talking about in the assembly. There's a quest for quality. There's a reward for the redeemer, a satisfaction for the saved, a treasure for the tribulation, a unity for the unsettled, a value for the vessel, a will for your way, a X for your ray, a yield for your yoke, and there's a hero for your zero. <laughs> I said there's a hero for your zero, and that hero is Jesus. Hello, somebody. And you can meet him in the assembly. Amen. Forsake not the assembly of yourself as a manner of some. But if you see the day approaching, you ought to exhort one another. Amen. We in the assembly, y'all. There ought to be some smiles on our faces. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the week has brought you. God has brought you to the Lord's day. He brought you to another week. Maybe this week will be better than next week. Just pray a little bit harder. Just trust in God. Because he's got a way to make things all right. Amen. He does it more abundantly. Even more than we can even imagine. Or we can even think. Oh, he good, y'all. Find yourself. Find yourself in the assembly. If you're not a member of the body this morning, you come by the hearing of the word, the believing in the same, repenting of your sin, confess Jesus to be the divine son of God. Go down in the watery grave of baptism for the remissions of sin. When you come up out of the water, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things would have passed away. Behold, all things shall, shall be new. It's something about the assembly. Uh, it's something about the assembly. I know, I know Latoya not feeling well. I know Annie's not feeling well. I know Sister Kate's not feeling well. I know Sister Marsh is not feeling well. There may be others that are not feeling well, but yet they still in the assembly. We got too many excuses not to be in the assembly. If you have obeyed, but straight away you come back by. Repenting of your sin, confessing to Jesus, uh, asking 
Lord, to forgive you in the church, to pray for you. And if you just need prayer, we'll pray for you while together we stand and sing the invitation song. Amen. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh, haste to the brink. Tis a fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. 